Hi, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to use an external hard drive with iMovie and cover a little bit of the workflow that's involved here on campus. Um, I've checked out this uh, external drive from an info lab and uh, there may be a variety of different models and uh, they may look slightly different but uh, the principles here are the same. It comes with this mash of, of cables but this is the the hard drive and it has uh, several different ports on the back to accommodate different machines and the one I would choose uh, in the case where you're using an InfoLab uh, Macintosh computer for iMovie which is kind of the the nature of a lot of these digital media assignments would be to use this um, actually the Firewire 800 as it's called uh, it has this squarish looking connector. Uh, technically it's a nine pin connector and you don't actually need these other cables. Uh, power is provided via the, the data connector. So you simply uh, put that in the, uh, the slot here on the back and then find a port that matches on your computer and uh, it's all there is to it. Alright so now we have the disk icon on the desktop and let me just show you a couple things about this drive. If I double click on it we can in fact confirm that there is nothing on this disk which is important because you don't want to go through the following steps if you have a, a drive that has precious material on it. The other thing is if I control click or right click on the drive and select get info, we can see that it comes pre-formatted as uh, MS-DOS FAT32. And this makes sense for the libraries because this format allows you to connect this drive into either a Mac or a PC and have it load up. But there is one weakness for video edit editing in particular, which is that it has a four gigabyte file size limit. And so it's not gonna allow us to do the kind of migration from machine to machine with huge video files that we need to do. So we're going to change the format of the drive. And the way that you do that is in Utilities. So from the Finder menu, click Go, Utilities, and then choose Disk Utility, and double click on that icon to open it up. It'll give you a list in this left column of the different kinds of drives that you have connected. And it's very important to find the drive that corresponds to the one you just plugged in. So it gives us this 250 gigabyte uh, size, and then it gives us the brand name so we can be certain that it is, in fact, the one that we want to format. There's only one partition scheme under this drive so that's why it has like a, a sub icon um, in a sort of a more advanced sense if you had a particular kind of need you can create different partitions um, that have different kinds of formatting but because you're checking this out from the library and you're going to be working on InfoLab machines uh, we just need to worry about reformatting it for the Macintosh. So we select the drive icon and get some different options up here and the one we are interested in is this erase button. It'll give you what the current format is MS-DOS FAT32 and all we need to do is from this drop-down choose Mac OS Extended Journaled and then click erase. Now it'll prompt us to make sure that it's the right one and at this point yeah you want to look and you want to make sure okay this is the 250 gigabyte let's see. We also um, 
you know, want to make sure that we revisit the notion that we don't have anything on the drive that we want to erase because it's going to wipe the entire thing. So once we click erase, you can see now the drive uh, has the format of Mac OS Extended Journals. The name is still untitled. It appears as it did before uh, on the desktop. And from here, I can show you how you migrate an iMovie project within the iMovie interface. So we're going to go down to iMovie 09, and it's important to realize that that's the broadest implementation of iMovie on campus, and that's what uh, we're supporting for the Engage Award. But we have our local machine where we started out with you know, a variety of different kinds of things. And this is the one of interest. It's just um, a little tiny clip with uh, some text and a uh, little eyesight thing that I uh, used as a test video. But it could be, could be anything. It could be you know, your entire assignment. Now, the process that we've been working toward is simply to move this project and all of its associated events or the video that goes with it to a different hard drive. And the way that we do that is from the project library, click, hold, and drag that assignment or that project to the untitled drive that we just formatted. And it's going to allow us to choose between just copying the project or copying the project and the associated events. And you can see there's a big difference in the, the size of those two things. In order to have a complete copy that we can work with on a different computer, we'll need to copy both the project and the events. So it automates that process. Uh, now that appears under the untitled drive. And then as we group our events by disk, you can see that in our untitled drive, it's moved the self-recording, in fact, to be accurate, it's copied this self-recording video from its original location here in 2011, here, to the external drive. So if you then open the external drive with another machine that has iMovie 09, you'll see your project under this drive and you can actually continue to work on it directly from that drive. So the migration part is one issue where you begin on one machine where your project or your event starts on the local hard drive and then you decide, hey, wait a minute, I want to move this to an external drive. You can do that by the method that we just mentioned. When you come back to edit that material, you can simply begin working on it from the external drive and continue that process. Now the other thing that you may want to do and is always a recommended idea is backing up your project and this would be another way to do that. For instance, if you have a laptop, you could primarily work on your laptop but then mount that external drive and build a copy over to your external drive and vice versa.